see you. Good to see you all. Hallelujah. You will not be discouraged. You will not die before your time. I say it again. You will not die before your time. And as I was coming in for the service, preparing yesterday, I just saw that I needed to break the power of premature death over the men. The enemy wants to take some fathers out, but not in this church. Your wife or children will not be exposed to a wilderness journey in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever needs to align in your life to avert that, the grace of God will strengthen you to align it in the name of Jesus Christ. You will prosper. You will advance in your career and in your business in Jesus' name. Please put your hands together for um, these precious fathers as we all take our seats. Um, you know, I was preaching in a church on Friday night. Beautiful church in Lagos here. We had a great time. Even yesterday night, I was preaching in that church. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I was praying and I preached the same message in, what, that I preached in, the, in that church on Friday and also on Saturday night. So, as I was preaching, just, you know, was prompted in my spirit, preach the same thing, at least in this first service. It's a message, um, you might have heard me preach before, uh, but it's about speed. And all the men in the house, get ready for speed in your life. Amen. But for everybody that believes it, whether you are male or female, God will give you speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Somebody say speed. Uh, say speed now. Nah. Yeah, speed. I mean, I've preached it in church before, but the Holy Spirit seems to be stirring my heart. So there are some slides I'm going to use uh, about speed. And the way I always try to start is to help you see the reality of speed. How many of us have been able to walk from uh, Lagos to Abuja before? You? You walk from Lagos to Abuja? Oh, you are doing your hand like this. Okay. How long does it take to walk from Abuja to, from Lagos to Abuja? How long does it take? One month. <laughs> How long does it take? You live in Abuja. <laughs> One week or two weeks to walk. Two weeks, maybe two weeks. I mean, I think online says two weeks, but I'm not sure you arrive safely. I'm not sure because of our complexities in Nigeria. I'm not sure. You arrive, but even if you arrive without napas hijacking you, you will not be the same person physically, isn't it? Now, how long does it take to run to Abuja? If you, I mean, walking, you know, just taking your steps is about two weeks. Running would be like, if you want to, uh, you know, extrapolate it a bit, nine days, right? That's like a week plus, okay? That's coming down, right? How long does it take to go by public transport? A day, uh, 12 hours 60 uh, public transport 12 to 15 hours why? they told me in that church yesterday 9 hours uh, okay because of the drop-ins and the parking okay so you find out we started from 2 weeks right now we, are, we had uh, 9 days one, 1 week plus and now we're talking about, um, let's say, 12 hours. Because if you're using public transport, somebody's dropping in Undo, somebody's parking in, they're dropping to eat and all those stuff. Now, if you're going by your own vehicle, you leave your house in the morning, 6 a.m., how long does it take? Nine hours or 10, right? You see how it's coming down, right? Now, if you're going to fly. Okay, I flew here on Friday to Abuja. That's 50 minutes, right? Max, or 55 minutes, depending on the weather. You know, so you see how speed operates. Okay, your leg walking uh, two weeks, then you want to now speed up your leg, you know, uh, one week plus, and then we have 12 hours, which is not bad, and then uh, like nine hours, you know, and then 50 minutes. Which one do you prefer? 50 minutes, that's how life is. Who created the legs? God gave you the legs. Even the legs to run. Who, give you the, who gave you the grace to run? The life to run? God. Who gave the wisdom to create the bus for the public transport? Who gave you your car? Who created or who gave the wisdom for the plane? It's the same God, right? But one is kind of better than the other. 
So I was in Abuja on Friday, flew in with uh, Pastor Bimbo early in the morning, around 6.30 for something, you know, and then we finished and then had the rest in the place for like two hours, got back to the uh, airport and flew back the same day. And that same Friday as I landed in Lagos, I went straight to that church to preach, preach and finish around 8 p.m. and then got home. You see how much you can achieve in a day with speed. But that same, you know, beauty of that day, somebody, if, if you are doing public transport, maybe you are still on the road. While I'm on my way back, maybe you are approaching somewhere, you know, you're not even yet there. And somebody had reached there and is already back. So the first thing I want to encourage us to have in our mindset is the fact that speed is a choice. Something that somebody is doing for two weeks, another person can achieve it under one hour, right? That two weeks can be 20 years. That two weeks can be 10 years. That thing that somebody is struggling to attain, to achieve in life for, for 10 years, by the operation of the, of, of the wisdom of God, giving you speed, can happen in one year. You will not waste the remaining part of this year. If I, especially as we enter the second half of the year, I pray that time wasters will be far from you. The things that will create unnecessary delay over your destiny, we, we, we cast them out of your pathway in the name of Jesus Christ. Because most of the times, what we call, uh, you know, uh, it's still about to happen, it's just time wasting. I mean, if you, if you run from Lagos to Abuja, even though you arrive, your health is not okay. But in the plane, if you're not the pilot, even the pilot, I'm not sure it's that stressful. But if you're not the pilot, you just sit down, you know, you can take a nap. Under one hour, they say we're about, uh, we're descending into Abuja, and then you land. You still have energy. That's the beauty of speed. It's like getting, using the escalator or elevator. You just enter the elevator, and then you're going to 10th floor, 15th floor. If somebody else is going through the staircase, and some of us, that's how our lives have been. Maybe it's a mindset. You like taking the staircase. All them of them, I want to do it this way. And then you are going through the staircase. You're on the 10th floor. You are tired. You are out. Somebody else is still, is already there with enough energy. Speed is a reality. I'm not talking about hurrying through life and making mistakes. I'm talking about speed. You can have business speed. You can have career speed. You can have ministry speed. It's a reality. And the first thing I said earlier is, it's a choice. It's a choice. Now, the reason most people don't make that choice, it's a mindset. They make the wrong choice. It's a mindset. Now, to run from, to walk from Lagos to Abuja, what will it cost you? In, in a way, what will it cost you? Pure water, right? Eh? Three bags of pure water, energy drink. Because it's your leg, right? That's what you think is your cost. Now, for you to go by air, okay, let, let me start from, let me, uh, public transport, how much is it now? To Abuja, who knows? Somebody, get on the keyboard, please. It's too quiet. I, I, I went to Abuja by public transport recently. Uh, uh, 45? No, in that church yesterday, they told me 25,000. Why are we doing like this in our church now? Uh, uh. Uh, how much is it? 45,000. To go to London or Abuja. Hey, they told me 25,000 yesterday in that church. That's Sole. What's Sole in English? Who knows Sole? Anyway. Oh, 45. So how much is it to fly? 120. Where? Kekemawa? 180, 150. Business class, 200. Sorry, 300. 300 going. So you look at it, you know, in your mind, this is cheaper. And some of us live that kind of life. This is cheaper. I will just spend this and I will still be in Abuja I, 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 two weeks. I will rest on the way. That, and, and some of us have that, do I use the word, village mindset. You forget that on your way, you can even die because of that hazard. Or even if you arrive, your health, the money you will spend on your health on the long run will be more than the flying. Do you know that flying is still one of the safest uh, ways to transport? Check online. A lot of people don't know. They just think, how can I fly? It's still safer than bus or driving. So if you even look at it very well, this flying is still cheaper than the others. Especially in Nigeria, when if you are driving, God forbid, and they capture everybody in the bus, and they don't ask for ransom of 2.5 million. And your mother, sorry, no, no, they, won't, they won't kidnap you. I was thinking somebody would ask them, I didn't know my child is that expensive. 
<laughs> God forbid. <laughs> so flying seems more expensive, but it's the cheapest. Because if you understand the mystery of time, that time is money. I, I, I was so happy on Friday the way just one dash and so much in a day. That's the life of a man that understands the power of time. Just one day, a lot can happen. It means in the next six months, a lot will happen in your life positively. I can't hear you louder, amen. A lot, a lot will happen. In fact, the six months will be like one year in terms of progress, in terms of achievement, in terms of advancement, in terms of impact. And for our ministry, it will be like five years in six months in, time, in terms of impact, in terms of being a blessing. So let's talk about the keys. The first one I said is, uh, it's a choice, okay? So make a choice for speed. Just, just decide that, Lord, I want to experience speed. I'm tired of just being backward or staying there. Uh, speed is a choice. Number two is to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. The wind of the Spirit. The wind of the Spirit. Now, this is very important, and I'm hoping maybe July, I'm not yet sure, we need to take a whole series about hearing the voice of God. You obtain speed when you capture the direction of God for your life. Many times, people experience stagnation when they are going against the tide of their own destiny. When you hear about the eagle, one of the secrets of the eagle is the fact that the eagle waits on a high cliff, and then if it's going to the east, for instance. He waits for the wind that's going to that east. When the wind shows up, the eagle launches into that wind, and it's the wind that actually helps it to soar. So it gains considerable speed beyond its own energy because the wind... So in our own context, that is the wind of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit guiding you about your career. That it's, that it's time for you to do this particular course. Or it's time for you to start this particular product. There's, for a ministry, God can give us a direction. This is the next thing for a mini, for a ministry to do. Direction. But if you can't capture that direction, you'll be doing the logical life. You'll be doing things by logic. And that is slow, so to say. The wind of the Spirit gives you the, the direction God is asking you to take in your own life for your own season and as you obey what God is asking you to do you gain speed. It's like water, I mean wine finished in the party, you can as well try to gather money from family members isn't it? And then run to the market right? And then start buying wine from all the, you know, that would take you some time In fact, by the time they get back from the, from the market the party would have, might have ended but they said fill the water pots with what? With water. And as they did that, the water became wine. That is speed. And that is cheaper, isn't it? They didn't have to go anywhere. So when the Holy Spirit guides you, showing you the way forward, you will gain speed. You will be led by the Spirit. Say, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. Say it loud, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. In all aspects of my life, I am led by the Holy Spirit. I am guided by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and one thing you need to know about the leadings of the Holy Spirit it's not logical. Many have missed God because of logic, especially men and fathers in the house. It's one thing that affects men in terms of fulfillment of destiny. I've heard stories upon stories, true stories of a man coming home. Ah, this man presented something to me, 35 million or 350 million. I met him in Dubai. He's a good business partner. And then they did all the calculations, all the projections. The man looked like the best business partner. And this same man presents it to his wife and says, Ah, dear, I met this man. He has three master's degree. He has worked with uh, the Dubai government and the Nigerian government for the last 27 years. It's just a perfect deal. And as he's saying it, the wife just starts feeling that something is not okay. Something, she can't place it. She's feeling it that there's something wrong with this business. And then begins to warn the husband, can you slow down on this thing? Can you take it easy? And then, of course, men, because we are most of the time logical. Hey, no, no, what do you know about business? Go to the kitchen and cook, you know? This man, if you know the experience, you know, he's using logic to suffocate the ladies of the spirit. And most of the time, after some few weeks or some few months, 
The man loses the entire money. Everything goes off. Some men are even so proud. They will even tell the wife something has gone wrong. When he comes back and they ask, how is the business? We're we working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. I've had too many stories like that. Don't live by this head in that sense. Follow your heart. Okay? The leadings of the Holy Spirit will preserve you from waste. We pres- it can preserve you from death also. Okay? So the wind of the Spirit gives speed. Another way we gain speed is by asking. Ask God for speed. Ask God for speed. And I'm going to pray for the men, especially, that God will give them speed this second half of the year. That between now and the next Father's Day, there will be considerable advancement in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ask God for speed. We have the story of um, Abraham's uh, chief of staff. His name is Eliezer. He was given a project. You know, I, I love the story. I've shared it several times in this church. Can you imagine... A, a rich man somewhere in, let's say in the Middle East, asking his chief of staff to go and look for a wife in Lagos. Or let's even look for a part of Lagos, maybe Ikeja. And then the man, the, the, the chief of staff travels to Ikeja. Do you know that project can take you six months or one year? You can just be there and be interviewing everybody and checking them out. How are you, lady? How old are you? What's your qualification? You know, or whatever system you want to use. That is, that is a major mission, a major project. But this servant was so strategic. He prayed in the, in the King James Version, Genesis 24, I think verse 12. Genesis 24, verse 12. He just prayed. And I, I, it's as simple as, Lord, this project I'm embarking on between July and December, send me good speed. He knew that ah, this thing can be stressful, it can take my entire five years or three years and nothing comes out of it. You will not go through unnecessary stress second half of this year. I'm telling you, sometimes a giddy can be the hindrance to your blessing. Just I must do it, I must do it. Lord, send me speed. Guide my steps. He says, and he said, Oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me what? good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Can we lift our right hand where we are and pray that prayer for the second half of the year? It's already just around the corner. Lift your voice and say, Father, as I enter to the second half of 2024, send me good speed. Now, you can now be specific. What area of speed? Is it your education? Is it a project you are involved with? Father, send me good speed. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. Lift your voices and pray. La caraba sando kola daba tangada. Mando koposoto. Pray about your children. Maybe your kids have some things they have to get involved with or do. Send me good, send us good speed or a project you're involved with. Lord, send me good speed. Keep me from stagnation or, or time wasting. I will not merry go round. I, I will not waste time, waste resources. I will hit it right by the help of the of the Holy Spirit, by the ministry of angels. Send me good speed. Send me good speed. In Jesus' name, God is sending us good speed. Anything that the enemy has, uh, 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 has, has put on your way <laughs> to relay you to stop you. The enemy has a way of trying to stop the progress of the believer. You know, I, I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit yanks it out of your pathway in the name of Jesus Christ. You are released into your speed. Many things that should have happened perhaps in the first half or in the last five years that have been held down by this grace for speed, you are released into achieving them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay? Ask God for speed. Number three, or number next. Lay aside every weight. Nothing hinders speed like weight. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Lay aside every weight. And I want every man especially to listen to this. One day I was with my pastor and he made a comment about what he noticed about people's destiny at times. I want every father to listen, every man, everybody anyway. He said there are people they 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 take four steps forward and then something happens to them. The same person takes three steps backward. After a while, five steps forward. After a while, three steps. So at the end of the day, on the aggregate, after like five, ten years, you realize that this person has not really made considerable progress with their lives. And one of the major things that causes that is weights and sin. 
It says, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside what? Every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Weights and sins. Some people just know about sins. Weights and sins. Weights. There are weights. There are things that a, a wrong friend can be a weight, isn't it? A very wrong friend can be a weight on your marriage. You just find that that friend in your life is destroying your marriage. The influence on your thinking. A wrong friend can be a hindrance on your business. Ah, this is your giving to church. What has it brought to you all these years? And then you two now, it's true, self. Let me just be working hard. And you're working hard, but it's not hard work that gives favor. And you stop giving. A weight. Your phone can be a weight. Distraction from the social media can be a weight. Wrecking your spiritual life. You can't, you can't even pray anymore. You can't pray. You can't pray effectively. You just mumble words. Your spiritual life is out. But Facebook, you are master. IG, you, are, you know everything. You know all the uh, influencers, all the jokers. You know their latest video. You know everything. But to pray for 30 minutes, you can't even stand. You are you're already out spiritually. That phone has become a weight. Many, many destinies are stagnated because of weights. An attitude can be a weight. A wrong attitude to life. I was speaking in that church yesterday and I, and, and I zeroed in on correction. For some people, the reason why they are not making progress, they don't like correction. It's a bad attitude. Oh, when you hail them, they love you. When you say they are doing fine, you are their friend. When you say, ah, see what you have done. Oh, you are... You are. But the day you correct them, you become their enemy. Some people are like that. And in case you are like that, it's not helping you. Because some of the things that have affected you are the things God wants to correct, but you won't listen. You always keep justifying yourself. You keep defending yourself. Or you keep explaining it away. So what God intended to do to reposition you for the next phase, you just stay on the same spot. After everything, you are still on the same spot. You will not be left behind. Say, amen. We will not be left behind. Correction. Attitude. For some people, it's laziness. Just lazy. I don't like, I don't want stress. Life is stress, isn't it? Like stress in the, in the sense of you must strive. Some people want to take it easy. Just take it easy. And I, I, I did something in that church yesterday and I say, if you're on the highway, you know, or, uh, any of our um, streets in Lagos, in the morning, from 5.30, I mean, when I see, when I go out in the morning, I say, wow, people are already out. If you stand on the same spot, what happens? Have you noticed something? They just pass you. And some people are like that, just, I don't want, I don't want to handle. If I, if I apply, they don't respond, I'll just wait. You know, that, that easy going life. And you find after some years, they're just backward. Some of our fathers were like that and they affected the family's finance. Maybe you had a father like that growing up, just there. You won't apply. You can't disturb anybody. I can't call any friend. Though. You know, I don't want any friend to embarrass me. All those attitudes, arrogant. I can't call anybody to help me. I can't work with anybody. I can't work under anybody. Okay, the one you are doing by yourself, how far has it taken you? And no money in the family. Just an, an attitude. The wrong attitude can be a major weight. You won't listen. You won't learn. You know everything. When others are trying to teach you, you want to teach them back. But for you to learn, you don't learn. Some ladies are like that also anyway. But you find that you're not making progress with your life. And yet, one counsel can be your breakthrough. One, one, one statement made can help your marriage. One, one counsel about that business can turn it around. I've had meetings in places where we're just talking and a pastor younger than I am just made a statement to somebody else. And I knew that statement was for me. I just picked it up. The, the main enemy here is pride and arrogance. Overestimation of your capacity and yourself. Especially when you have had results in some areas. You can begin to believe that you are invincible. Having results in one area does not make you an expert in other areas. But some of us think because I have results in this area, then I must know everything. You don't know everything. Don't be deluded. So, uh, so, so what, what weight do you need to lay aside? And the thing is, you are the one that will lay it aside. It's not God. He said, lay aside every weight. 
Then every sin, for some of us, is sin. You are committing sin. What we call a share in Yoruba. <laughs> you know it. I don't want to start naming uh, is it adultery or this. And you have been in it. You have been in it. And God's grace has been, you know, abounding. But after a while, it looks like you are frustrating the grace of God. That's what scripture says. That don't frustrate the grace of God. I remember the story of David. David made a mistake. Well, a huge mistake. He committed adultery and then killed the, the husband of the woman. Guess what? For one whole year, God didn't say anything. Ah, God is so merciful. And I, 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 was, I was sharing yesterday, I said, you can imagine, because David was a worshiper. So, for a whole year, he would go to God's presence and be worshiping him and not say anything about what happened. And God would say, ah, ah, oh God. So, he would just come. Who is like unto thee? Oh, Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, God. He would sing us. He would say, I, I know. I know. Then the next day again, Oh, Mema, oh, Mema. Ah, you did something, no? Let's talk about it. Let's resolve it. He that hideth a sin shall not prosper. After one year, God sent a prophet to him. On that frequency, Wahala don't come. Scripture says, judge yourself so you will not be judged. Now, this judgment is not eternal judgment. That one is different. We'll teach about that sometimes this year. It's talking about when there's a time lapse. After one year, God now sent a prophet to him. Abba, you did this. And it was not palatable. His own son raped his own daughter. His own son killed another son. From the root of that sin, sin sinks. So I don't know what sin you need to lay aside. Yours might not even be adultery. It might, not, it might be covetousness. You, you just like stealing, taking money, taking things that doesn't belong to you. And it could be sins of omission. You know, we have sins of commission, sins of omission. The, the omission is are, are things that you are supposed to do, but you didn't do. But the root of it is in pride or some unnecessary arrogance. You are supposed to do it, but out of... Mm, mm. That, 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 you know, those things that people can't see, it, but God sees it. In fact, from scriptural understanding, those things, they are weightier than the ones that people commit. You know, you can be dishonoring somebody in your heart and the person will not know. But God sees it. And you can be looking at the person, but in your heart, you have, you have, you have reduced the person to something else. Tell your neighbor, lay aside every weight and every sin. Lay aside every weight. And that might be what a father in the house must speak to them and go home and reflect on that. Sometimes fathers get to a point where nobody can talk to them anymore, not even their wives. Maybe it's only in church that you can be spoken to. And the moment you miss this one, then what else? Is it the, gov the president will come and talk to you in your house? Your dad can't talk to you anymore. Your uncle can't talk to you anymore. Your wife cannot talk to you. You always fight her. You, you deflect it. You explain it away. Now maybe this is like, I don't want to use the word last chance. Now if you now miss this one, then what is left? Who's going to talk to you? Is it the governor of the state? Or the traffic water. Who's going to talk to you? We all have things that are called blind spots, right? That will help us to make decisions. But I, 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 my joy is that just one decision can change the trajectory of your life massively. Massively. Okay, let's close. My time is gone. Uh, so, lay aside every weight. And then uh, use adversity as an advantage. Use adversity as an advantage. I'll, I'll close with that. One of the things that give people speed is turning adversity into an advantage. If you're going through some adversity, business down, money no day, things are just out, it's either you allow it to sink you or you take advantage of it for a turnaround. It's a choice you can make this morning. The prodigal son is a classic example. He was doing well in his father's house. Everything was fine, but he made a mistake, right? He bolted from the dad's place. He was rebellious. He went to a land. As scripture says, he had no money, and nobody was giving him anything. 
In fact, one of the ways you know that you need to run back to God is when people don't, they don't seem to want to help you anymore. It's like God went to speak to them. For when people come to me at times and tell me, I've been asking everybody and nobody's helping me. You're already making me my, helping me make my own decision. You went to talk to everybody, they didn't give you anything. There, there's something wrong somewhere. Is that mean I would not give you? Why is everybody not responding to you? That statement in the life of the prodigal son, and no man gave to him. That means favor stops flowing. And sometimes, especially for the fathers in the house, you just realize that things that used to respond before in business, it's not responding. Yeah, I call this client, they send money. I call that one, you know. But suddenly, everything stops. Hmm, what is happening here? Is it that somebody went to go and tell all of them? Maybe, <laughs> maybe in that sense. Like, like Jonah. If he enters a thousand sheep going to Tashish, nothing moves. Nothing moves. And no man gave to him. But he did something. He turned the adversity into an advantage. And I have a list here. How did he do it? How did he do it? Number one, go for a retreat. When you notice that the door that you used to knock and open, before you knock it, it opens. You do this one, like, 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 like only Midas touch, right? You know? And suddenly everything looks... All the efforts you are straining, money no coming. Go for a retreat, two day retreat, one day retreat, three day retreat to pray. If you need to repent, repent there, make some decisions. The prodigal son said, Ah, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and I perish with hunger? He said, I will go back. That's repentance. Sometimes during the retreat, you will know the things that you need to repent about. Repentance doesn't usually mean I sinned. It just also means a turn around, right? A change. That God asked me to do something early in the year, but I was stubborn. Could that be the reason why these things like this? So you repent by obeying what he said you should do, okay? And for somebody else, it might be literal sin. So that's a during the retreat, your head will be clear, and then you repent, and then you renew. You renew. You renew the altar of your life before the Lord. During that retreat, there will be a revelation. God will give you a word. For the prodigal son, it was almost on the same spot. Scripture says he came to himself. He came to himself. Something is wrong. People might not know, but me, I know that something is wrong. Every man knows where something is wrong. Your wife might not even know, but you know that ah, something is wrong. Go for a retreat. Take time out. Stop jumping. Stop trying to use activity to cover it. Stop trying to use things to cover the thing. Go for a retreat. Ask God for the way forward. A revelation from, look at the prodigal son. <laughs> he said, I will go back to my father. I will not pose as a son. Let him employ me as a servant. And it's better than me eating with pigs. And guess what? That changed everything. I think the guy had speed because by the time he was on his way back home, before he could even talk too much, the father heard him and restored him. You'll be restored. Your glory will be restored. Your business will be restored. Things that had walked away from your life that belongs to you will walk back into your life. So somebody say, Amen. Rise up on your faith this morning. Rise up on your faith. I think I'll close with that this morning. Father, thank you. Let's go ahead and give him thanks for what we have received. And if there are things in your heart you want to talk to God about, which I think you should have, you can do that uh, right right away, even as we praise him and give him glory. Lift your voices and give him glory for what you have received. Uh, and somebody, what you just need to do is to say, Lord, I receive your speed. I receive your restoration. I receive your speed. Lift your voices. Give thanks to God for what you have heard. Uh, if you need repenting, do it joyfully. The devil does not like when people make a U-turn. He wants them to head, head, head into you know, destruction or accident. You know, but you are saying, no, I dodge the bullet. I dodge, I dodge this disaster. I, I, I avert it. I stop it. You take a, a U-turn. I say, no, I won't do that in my business. No, I, I won't do that again. I, I won't take that step again. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voices and express yourself. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for you accelerate us. You grant us speed. You grant us speed. Re masada bara sondo lo kashanda. Mandala ratongre de mando stara bara kasa. Father, as, as we pray, I break, I break stagnation. I break stagnation. 
I break stagnation. I break stagnation. Nakora sata mando kalada pradekaza havadaro stondo lokosoteza mando. I break stagnation in the lives of women and men here. Somebody is watching online. You have been going through the same cycle of the last five years in your business. I break that negative cycle right now. You break out of that cycle. You break out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone hearing my voice? You have been merry-go-rounding about destiny for a while. You can tell it's the same cycle. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. It looks the same. This morning I come with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I declare that you are breaking out of that cycle. That negative cycle. That unfulfillment. That, that stagnation. That, that, that setbacks. You break out of it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you into destiny. I release you into speed. In fact, the things that you missed in the last five years, God will give you speed to cover up for that lost time right now in the name of Jesus Christ. His name will be glorified. His name will be glorified in your home. Glorified in your health. Glorified in your journey. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Every dark cloud over your head is broken right now. Fresh grace. Fresh strength. Fresh energy. Fresh blessings. Fresh manifestation of the blessings. How you are liberated. You are released. God is glorified. We give you the glory Lord. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah.